Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to cover how Form as a Service can work with a custom database table. In the previous video in this series, I showed how Form as a Service works with Salesforce or Agile Point Data Entity. In case of uh, custom database tables, there are some variations which I'm going to cover in this video. We are going to go to Build Apps. Click on Add an App. We'll say, uh, select form-based application, give it a name, click next. Next, uh, when I have to select the primary data source, this time I'm going to select a database. So if it was data entities, agile point data entities, you would have selected this. If it was Salesforce, you would have selected this. But this time I'm going to create a form as a service against your existing database. Go ahead and give it a name, say form2, the data source name. Next, select the connection to your database, which you can define an access token right over there, or maybe define one at the global level. I just selected the global level one. It will show you the list of tables which is available. So for my example, I'm going to select the customer table. It will show me the list of fields which are available in this customer table, and I can selectively choose which fields I want to bring down into my data source. Next, it will also show me the relationship uh, table. So if this table had a foreign key relationship with uh, some other child table, you can actually bring down data from that as well. So I'll say, yes, I want to bring down data from orders, which is related to customers. And again, within orders as well, I can select specific fields which I want to bring down. I'm going to go ahead and click Finish. So it says, uh, please wait while the application is being created. Now over here, this is the first variance which you will see compared to an Agile Point Data Entity or Salesforce. This time it created a new form, an update customer form, and only one view, which is all customers. Because I don't know what, uh, if you remember uh, in case of Salesforce or Data Entity, we also used to generate recently created and recently modified record views. Uh, because we knew the names of the uh, the fields, the date fields, which would help me track that. In case of your custom database, since I don't know what would, uh, if you have a field called recently created or recently uh, uh, last modified date or created date, we don't create those views by default. You can always add it if you want. Click OK. Now, the second uh, variation I would like to point out is that because this is your custom database and I don't know whether you have an auto-generated field ID at, uh, in your database for generating a, a sequence number of the row, or maybe, maybe you want a user to enter the primary key on the form like a uniquely generated um, sequence number, you will have to take care of that logic. So you can drag and drop say, and uh, in my case, ID is an auto-generated uh, column. So I'm not going to drag and drop that on my form because database is going to take care of it. But if you expect UI to supply that value, you will drag and drop this and map it to a sequence number control. OK, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and put a heading. And drag and drop name, map it to a text box. Date of birth, map it to a date control and age, map it to a number box. Similarly, I'm going to also put in the child table. So I'm going to say order details. And I'm going to drag and drop the whole repeating child node over here. So it will say, ask me, what kind of repeating control do you want to use? So I'll say, I want to use a sub form span it across three columns. I'm going to make it repeatable so that I can I can have multiple uh, orders associated. I'll also change the display style to columns just for a better look and feel if I wanted it that way. And I'm going to add the three fields over here. I'm going to say, okay, I want a three column layout. Click on this button to bring up data source. 
And I don't want to put IDs. IDs is something which will be auto-generated. So I'm going to, as per my database logic, I'm going to put item description, quantity, and final price. Now I could have a unit price and auto-calculated price, but I'm going to just keep it simple. And click save and check in. So as you can see, my application is created. I'm going to go ahead and click on update customer. I have to design that form as well. And I'm going to just say that copy the layout of the new form into the update form. And just do a save and check in. I could have done a bulk edit to make some changes, but I'm going to just go with whatever I have. Now, I don't have to open the view usually, but I'll, I'll just go ahead and show you from an understanding perspective. So what happened in the all customer view, it did add a list view, just like uh, I showed in the previous video. The list view control is only available if the form type is of view, and it auto configured it as well. So as you can see over here, it added the columns which I had selected. If it is a date column, I can provide my formatting. We are going to add more formats in near future. I can specify which columns are visible and which columns are visible in mobile. So for mobile, I might have lesser columns visible. I can do that. I'm going to quickly show you the lookup it, uh, which got generated. So as you can see, the lookup which got generated was for the customer table. We are going to add support for uh, schema selection over here as well. So you saw that I can select the schemas if I wanted. It selected all the columns which I needed, which were four in this case. Now, in this case, I did not specify the order by. Now, typically, I would have, uh, in case of Salesforce and data entity, I just added last modified date descending. But I, since I don't know in your custom database if there is such column exists, then uh, you have to do it yourself if you wanted to define a sort order. Now, if we did find a column name last modified date, then we will automatically add it. But uh, it's your custom database. It can be any, you could have named it anything. Okay, so let's go back and I'm going to go ahead and click publish. Now, before I do that, I just wanted to again repeat one thing that you can actually get in here. You can define as many views as possible. So we added one view, but you can add multiple views as uh, if you wanted to bring back the recently created, recently modified based on your custom column names. I'm going to go ahead and click publish, check in the files. Right now I have only one view, so that is defaulted. I can set permissions around it, just like I showed in the previous videos. I can, I can define who is the owner, who is the designer, who can initiate these workflows or, or forms, sorry. Uh, I, can, I can quickly uh, get into that. I'll go with defaults for now. I'll switch to work center, my application. So I can see my all customers view listed over here again. And like I pointed in the previous video, the name of the application shows up. But since this is not a process based application shows the form name. And when you click on it, it takes you to the list view of that record. So you can see here is the list view showing up over here. And I'm going to go ahead with two existing records from the my custom database. Now, if I had more views, I could have gone in and changed the view as well. I'll go ahead and click plus. It brings up the page which I had designed. So I'm going to say, some item description, maybe quantity is one and price is 100. Just quickly copy this and make it 200 and click Submit. So as you can see, my record got inserted over here. I can actually click on Edit and I can see that the records actually are being fetched from the, my database, custom database table, both the parent and the child. If I click Cancel, it will go back. I can make edits as well. At the same time, I can I can delete the records. Thanks a lot for your time.